One of the things that science does when we don't know how important something is, is that we do experiments. All of the drugs that you might take to help with a particular condition that you might have go through a set of trials that are very rigorous. Beginning uh, almost 50 years ago, a set of trials were begun to understand the importance for early childhood education. And um, over 40 years ago, my colleagues and I were very fortunate to be able to start one of those trials in uh, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And we were just now in the midst of collecting data on children that we first saw when their mothers were pregnant with them who are now 40 years of age. And we have embedded in that um, series of trials, we've embedded experiments to allow us to try to understand which factors are important and how important they are. And so we wanted to begin by studying highly vulnerable children because if we could help them, all of society could benefit. But back 40 plus years ago, we didn't really know whether we could have a positive impact or not. That's why you do research. You do research because you don't know what the answer is. You think something might work. And so what we did was to begin a study that we called the Abbasidarian study. I was a young assistant professor, and I love big words. And Abbasidarian means one who learns the fundamentals of something, such as one who learns the alphabet. You can refer to it as the ABC study if you'd like. Uh, but we really wanted to find out how important early education could be. And so in the study, we created two groups for treatment, and they were done by a lottery or by a random assignment process. But our control group was not a no-treated group because we really wanted to ask about education. So we provided health care to both groups. We provided adequate nutrition to both groups. We provided family support services to both groups. And for one group, we created a child development center. Children were entered into it at six weeks of age. They attended it five days a week, 50 weeks a year, until they went to kindergarten. And in that, we created an individualized curriculum for each child, and we tried to provide the single best environment that we could conceive and, and enact. And that's part of what I want to talk with you about today. One of the things that we did was to measure the children's developmental progress at periodic intervals with people who had no connection with the program. We've published about 250 or so articles on this study. I'm only going to hit a couple of highlights. Uh, what The message I have is fairly simple, and this graph starts us off. For everything I'll talk about in the next 15 minutes, the red always refers to the group that got the educational treatment, and the yellow refers to the control condition. These are the scores of children on cognitive tests beginning at six months of age, going to uh, four years of age. And what you see is a representation of the percentage of children who maintain normal cognitive development. And for the children in the control condition, coming from undereducated and impoverished families, children who were perfectly healthy at birth, you see that over the course of the first four years of life, they go from being perfectly healthy and cognitively sophisticated to, to only a little under 50% of them retain that by the time they're four years of age. And the function of the early education was to prevent that decline from occurring. And virtually all the children in the treated group remained within normal limits. 